open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We are radio for the local craft beer movement. Broadcasting live from Red Brick Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm Aaron Williams. And I am Tim Dennis, and we have our man Brian Hewitt with us as well. Brian, how you doing? I'm doing well. What's up, guys? Hey. Man, Brian's ready for St. Patrick's Day. He's He's got his green on today. He yes. does. So he's all set. And you know what? This part of the show, Aaron wanted me to say no green beer. No. He wanted me to say no green beer was allowed, but I'm blocking that. I approve of a green beer on St. Patrick's Day against the uh, the wishes of most craft beer geeks. Yes. It's a once a year silly tradition. Do it if you want to. You know, I okay. still go for it. You know what? You're, you're, you're a, you're you a populist. What you that's good. I, that's it, man. I, I like the Woodruff Berliner Weisses. Those are those are acceptable. I think, okay. but because uh, that's green. But other than that, no. Dump that sucker. One day, one dump that day sucker in the Savannah year. River. Exactly. One day a year, it's allowed. So. Now I want a Woodruff. <laughs> but anyhow, Berliner. you know what? You sep- you celebrate St. Patrick's Day however you exactly. want. To. I'm going to do me exactly. You can do you. There you so, go. But today we're not going to be drinking green beer. We are drinking red brick beers. We've got this, and uh, Garrett, you seem to be pretty uh, uh, pretty solid that there will not be green beer here today. We're correct? not doing. We're not doing. Green it's beer. not going to no, happen. No, it's no. not going to happen. I, right, I do so. want to jump in here and say that I'm I'm cool with people doing anything they want to. Right. I just don't want to have to make green beer and. Not having to is pretty cool too. Yeah, that's yeah. that's it. You, <laughs> you, go. you do you. That's yeah. that's what it's about. You so, want to drink green beer? Yeah. So we just violated the radio protocol, by the way, because you did not properly introduce these two gentlemen. Next I was going to introduce so. them. Okay, go. You go for it then. I we're introduced going myself. To. Go that was on me. That's, that's good. Fault. It's all good. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So now that we're done with the St. Patrick's Day beer talk, <laughs> that's right. we're at Red Brick Brewing, and we we're going to be talking to Gavin McKenna and Garrett Lockhart about Red Brick beers, the new Red Brick Airbrush Daydream, their new beer release. And a slew, Aaron, a slew of other topics. A lot of other topics, yes. Absolutely. Red Brick has been crushing it recently, and uh, I'm really stoked to talk to these guys about it. So uh, it's good times. It's good times. So, you know, um, this week was actually probably one of the few weeks that I actually beat you guys uh, when it comes to beers and, and beer drinking. Okay. Yeah, we had a bottle shared at, at my company, and it was... I was on the struggle bus. It was on Tuesday, and Wednesday was not a pretty day for me. I was, again, the struggle bus was, was kicking in hard. The thing is, based on my past experience, you handle bottle shares so well. I do not. As a matter <laughs> of, <laughs> please don't, tell, please don't uh, bring up that one. It's not good. Yes. So, but that's, again, it's a problem. Is because everyone brings their greatest beers, their whales, and I'm like, I want to have every single one of these. And then you just go over the edge, and it's not pretty. But uh, some of the ones, again, I wanted want to point out that uh, we had uh, Cantillon. That's, that's a nice beer. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one before. Which one? That's a, uh, it's, it's the the original, the OG one with the guy leaning back and, and the, the goose. That's the one that was. Cantillon <laughs> goose. Good stuff. That's good stuff. Good. I don't know. You know, exactly. I'm, I'm not uh, as, uh, as familiar with those good Belgians as you want, but still, that's a fantastic beer, and I'm happy. Uh, beer to Iris, home style. Again, a great another uh, double IPA. Other half, uh, one, of my, one of my guys I work with, uh, they came back from uh, New York City, and they brought back a bevy of other half beers, which is uh, always cool to have. And one of my favorites, the uh, Modern Times uh, out of California, a Modem Tones. Uh, they've got uh, it was a big, big old barrel aged style that they had too. So that was uh, pretty nice. Uh, also had a Tangerine SPF 5050. I was excited about that uh, for Red Hair. Uh, always a good summertime beer. And uh, it was interesting. It's, it's a really tasty uh, beer if you're, if you're looking for that kind of thing. Um, of course, after the big barrel aged stout, it didn't kind of match very well, but uh, it's got a great nose on it. And you just really, really taste that tangerine and smell that tangerine on the nose. It's great. Good stuff. Man. Yeah, definitely. Good How about stuff. you guys? We made the rounds a little bit. Brian and I doing our typical weekend run of the rounds. So uh, we went over to Burnt Hickory for the digits release, their Blood Orange IPA. Yep. So that was a lot of fun. They had some cool variants of that on. Killboy Powerhead is the uh, cream sickle, orange yes. cream sickle version of that. I'm so quite the one. fan of that Me one. Too. Yes. Yeah, so that's good. We went over to uh, From the Earth Brew Pub. The food there is absolutely phenomenal. Enjoyed a few beers that they had there. Checked out Secret Stash Bash mm-hmm. down at Taco Mac. Yeah. Enjoyed some beers there. And I went to Hopsticks for their first anniversary. Always good. I love their ramen. It's the best ramen in the Their in the ramen area. is phenomenal. Yes. Seriously, I'm, I've had ramen a half a dozen places that are rated some of the tops in Atlanta. And Hopsticks beats them all. No, they're, they're absolutely. Good, so. And what was they had the sushi corn dog. And, sushi uh, corn dogs. That's it, man. That's you can't, it, man. You can't uh, get anything set. better than that. All right, let's check out this week's Truck and Taps Beers of the Week. <laughs> Crack open the cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. We have a bevy of beers before us, we do. Tim. What do we got? We've already consumed several. You know, that's good. Cameron here at Red Rick always takes care of us, and she brought us a very nice flight of all the samples here, so we've checked out several. So 
Airbrush Daydream is the big topic today. And yep. we've been sipping that. And that is a very common style, a Myrtle Beach style IPA. <laughs> yes. So, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, what that means exactly. So we're also uh, sipping a lot of variants that they've done on that. We have their Table for One, which is a chocolate cherry stout. They did a nitro version of that. We're also going to be sipping some Three Taverns beers. We have Rowdy and Proud, which is their tribute to the Atlanta United. And uh, we're going to get into some Morning Smack, which was one of my favorites of their anniversary. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have Soul of the City American Pale Ale here. We have some Red Brick Pilsner and uh, uh, Hypewell. We got one of the Hypewell variants here, the Mayan version. One of the 6,000 Hypewell variants. Yes. They're bringing and out this is days. one that I haven't had, so I'm excited about that. No, so. this is good stuff, definitely. So well, that's cool. what we're getting into, Aaron. That sounds like trouble. Speaking of trouble, here's Brian. He's got the headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. What's happening? All right, so we got some interesting news. We've got Marietta. They are approving plans for Wise Owl Brewery, according to the Marietta uh, Daily Journal. It's going to be a 10,000-square-foot brew pub to be constructed on North Park Square. The owner hopes to have the brewery you know, open within the year, and you can look for traditional beers from them, but also some adventurous offerings like peanut butter porter and cinnamon crunch stout. Those are a few of the ones they, they uh, teased. Brew to Serve Restaurant Group is moving forward with the Bold Monk Brewing, as reported by What Now Atlanta. Uh, the first of several building permits have been su- submitted to the city of Atlanta. The uh, place will be a 12,500 square foot restaurant, brewery, and beer garden. It will be located in 3rd and Urban's Complex w- West Midtown Developments. John J.R. Roberts, partner in the restaurant group, brewmaster at Max Loggers, and more importantly, friend of the show, has developed the uh, beverage program and the brewery design, so I'm excited to see that. It's going to be cool. Not too far from where we are right now here at Red Brick. Y'all have got quite a brewing. He's he's right around the corner. Yeah. um, Yeah. There may or may not be some beer in our system to... um, Help launch it. We cannot How confirm nor deny these. There we, we may Breaking have been news. Collaborations with them, How about so. that? All Excellent. right. Yes. Good well, stuff, JR, of course, man. one of the OGs, one of the greats uh, here in the Atlanta and Georgia beer scene. So, yeah. Good like to see him moving forward. Our, our beer dad. Yeah, I like it. Proud beer dad. He's, I celebrated his 20th anniversary there at Mox Lagers with him you know, a couple weeks ago. That was awesome. a good time. So. Yeah, the work he's done for this industry and this community oh, is just definitely. amazing. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's cool for cool those, guy. you know, for those not familiar with the Atlanta area. Uh, we're in the west side, actually the upper west side area where we are right now. But this right. is kind of one of our few brewery clusters. There's several, several breweries real close by: Second Self, Scofflaw, Red Brick. Uh, we've Monday got nights. Monday night not yeah. too far from here. We have Steady Hand coming mm-hmm. and uh, the Bold Monk. So we're gonna have just a a ton of beer. We'll just get. An Uber bus. They need Uber buses, right? Just run a circle there. A trolley of some sort. Yeah, yeah. street so. street car. They should have put the streetcar yeah. here instead of in downtown. They should have. That's brilliant. Absolutely. Okay, yes. I'm going to run from air. That's good. What else <laughs> we got? All right, so we have the Georgia House okaying the brunch bill. Uh, they gave their Yay. final approval to the bill on Monday that would allow Georgia restaurants the ability to start selling alcoholic beverages at 11 a.m. instead of the current 12:30 p.m. And it is now, or it's heading to, or it's now on Governor Deal's desk for signature. Local voters would still have to approve the time change before it can take effect. But uh, it's worth noting that the part of the bill that would have allowed earlier sales from package stores was stricken from the uh, the bill in the Senate earlier on. So Yes, and so for those uh, not listening in state uh, in the state of Georgia, that uh, we, we have struggled with our beer laws for the past few years. We finally were able to have the audacious plan to sell beer directly from the brewery here earlier uh, last year. And now it looks like we can sell uh, beer and alcohol before noontime. The Brewers Association has released its annual list of the top 50 U.S. craft beer companies for 2017. I think the top four are not really that surprising. We've got Yingling, Boston Beer Company, Sierra Nevada, and New Belgium in order. Uh, There are three from the southeast. Which ones do you think those are? I know one of them at least. I know Sweetwater's on that list. So that's number 15. Uh, Gambrinus in Texas? No, that Gambrinus is is sixth. Well, I guess you could call that sort of south. Are they craft? I'm not They're sure. They're in the list. Yeah, That's one of the interesting things I saw. There were a lot of there were three collective slash aggregate uh, craft beer companies that are on the list. I don't know how they really fit in, but you had Gambrinus at sixth. You have Canarchy at ninth, oh, which is yeah. that's considered Tampa. Oscar so Blues that's in Tampa, yeah. And then you have Artisanal Brewing Ventures, which is Victory and Southern Tier together. And when those guys get together, they really jump up the. Okay. List. Yeah, those right. co-ops are gotcha. pretty good. So great. We're gonna take a quick break right now. We'll be back and talking to the crew from Red Brick Brewing. You listen to the Beer Guys Radio Show, BeerGuysRadio.com. We'll be back right after this.
It's Aaron and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their taproom in Marietta to taste and see. Also, visit their barrel room with an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Shake it back! And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com. We are live at Atlanta's Red Brick Brewing Company this week. We're sipping their new release, Airbrush Daydream, and we're going to be talking with Director of Brewing Operations, Gavin McKenna, and we're going to be talking with President Garrett Lockhart. Guys, thanks so much for joining us this week. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So we had um, Red Brick on the show, I think, about two years ago. Right That's at two right. years ago, I yeah. think you and your former brewmaster, uh, Steve mm-hmm. Anderson, That's correct. joined us, and uh, since then... You joined uh, not too long ago, right? Not too horribly long. I signed up about eight months ago for eight, this. Okay, yep. all right. And other than that, other than Steve moving on and Gavin joining the team, not much else has changed, right? Just status quo here, huh? No, that's not true at that's all. That's not true. No, okay, not true. all right. <laughs> there we go. Wait a minute here. That's a, that's um, a... Yeah, we've had the September 1st law change, which is a huge deal for not just us, but all of Georgia Beer. Right. Um, and we've made some additions, and um, you know, we've got a new uh, director of sales, Matt Wells. He's a good guy doing great things for us, and um, there's a ton of stuff going on at the brewery. Yeah. Too much to, to list right here, right now. Absolutely. We'll get into some of it, though. Sure. We'll, go, we'll go through the list here. So before we get in too deep, we're here. Uh, today, you're releasing a new beer. And we are sipping on some airbrush daydream. And I don't know what to think about this. I don't know what to think about this style, man. So uh, it's a little scary because I've been to Myrtle Beach. Yes. Sure. For spring break. And this is a Myrtle Beach style IPA. So what in the world is a Myrtle Beach style IPA? Well, I guess I got to jump off and say that I, I'm in the minority. I think Myrtle Beach is really cool. And I yeah, like it is. It a lot. I'm, with a lot of, I'm with you. I'm with you. you know, and I mean, I've been to like the Alligator Museum Zoo or whatever that is, and I've done the mini golf and. Uh, you can you can have a wholesome good time there. You can also just get weird and drunk, and that's kind of cool that's too. The time I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. about. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Um, but you know, we we were having some internal conversations, and we were kind of poking fun at at this idea of this New England IPA, and and how it you know and, and you know for good reason it's gained popularity. I think those beers are, are fabulous when they're done right, but it just seems like everybody wants to do one now, and everybody's kind of using that as a as a sales point in in the beers they're creating and. And one of the conversations we're having internally is that it doesn't it doesn't really feel like it's anything more than a manufactured sales word in some ways and that a lot of a lot of people are using that word to sell beer and then a lot of the breweries that are known for these beers are actually not using that terminology to sell their double IPAs. And so we thought, wouldn't it be funny if we just did a hoppy beer that was really outside the box, and we just assigned it to a specific just geographic put location? Just someone on there, right? Yeah. Just, to, right. just to be a little yeah. tongue-in-cheek and have sure. some fun with it, you know? And well, the, so we said, hey, why not Myrtle Beach? It's spring break time. We're going to release it. It's, it's refreshing. It's light. It's yeah. going to have this tart character to it. Let's just have some fun. Well, and it's interesting because you got the tartness on it, uh, but you can, I believe you did dry hop that as well because there's a little bit of that hoppiness to it too, We did. Right? Yeah, yeah we, we actually hopped it uh, fairly fairly extensively. Okay. Uh, this is uh, hopped with, with citra and then some cryo powder, mosaic and citra cryo powder. Okay. And, uh, and then also some topaz. Which is a, a fun addition, a Southern Hemisphere hop that okay. I really care for. Very cool. So, Gavin, we haven't talked about it too in depth, but cryo powder is one of the hot things right now. A lot it of places are using that. So mm-hmm. what is cryo powder and why is that gaining in popularity? Sure. Uh, so the easiest way to say it is that when you look at a hot pellet, hot pellets are generally classified, the normal industry standard is a T90, and the 90 indicates that it has about 90% of its original biomass from the vi- from the vine. Uh, and these would be T10s, which would mean that it has about 10% of the original hop leaf biomass from the vine. So basically, 
once the hop is flash frozen and run through the hammer mill, there are sieves that are collecting all of the uh, all the lupulin glands okay. and leaving behind a lot of the leaf matter. And so you have a very concentrated aromatic property to the hop, but you're leaving behind a lot of the the vegetal matter that in the hop pellet can sometimes cause for yield loss because uh, you can use a cryo powder with less volume to get more kind of ar- okay. aromatics on it. But then also um, you get a little bit of that chlorophyll grassy type raw hop character off of the dry hop. So, so it is presents this re- differently. Is this the same as or similar to like hop resins that, that, that we saw? It is not, no. Okay. So uh, there's a couple different ways. So this, this is the hop hash thing, which is really hop what's hash, left when hops get pushed right. through the pelletizer. It's yeah. the resin that builds up on the pelletizer. And then there's also extracts, which are used for bittering, which would be like a CO2 extract or, um, or, or in, I mean, it's very similar to like you see from a butane extract from other industries that also have sure. high resin goods. <laughs> yes. Smoking those no more than putting them about. in the, uh, exactly, in the yeah. beers. I'm trying to be reasonably you can coded. do both That's radio, right. yeah, you know? exactly exactly we are in georgia after all right, right. we are in georgia we're not yes. broadcasting yes. from denver we got to be a little bit careful yeah. about these things now so so but it's interesting though because again you came out with this this uh, myrtle beach style ipa and you've also seen um, i've also seen in florida they come out with a florida weiss you know a wakefield yeah. and some other breweries like that come out with this some of the tartness but very juicy type of things as well so uh, you know, it's almost like a southern type of a play on some of these uh, some of these sour beers and some of these kind of light, refreshing beers. Well, you know, I think um, I think that one thing that I think about a lot is I've sat in some rooms full of really accomplished people in in mixed fermentation and in, in some of the related kind of more sour beer or lambic style beer fields, and there's a lot of concern in those communities about people appropriating words that don't really belong or about using a kettle souring technique to try to take money from people that are expecting something that has the complexity of a mixed fermentation sour. Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to do was to just use the word tart And I think in in our beer. And I think that one thing you're seeing a lot in the Southeast is that that, not necessarily the complexity of a mixed fermentation beer, but the idea and the concept of tartness as a component to a beer that is drinkable and is summertime friendly is something that people really demand. It's just so hot down here for such a long yeah. amount of the year. I that, mean, it, that's an important piece of our culture. For exactly. Beer. It's a classic, you know, again, lawnmower beer. It's, it's, it's hot. It's 95 degrees with 90% humidity down here in June, July, August. After I've done yard work, I just want to crush something that's tart, refreshing, just like, you know, lemonade if you want the non-alcoholic version, but something, again, tart, refreshing, kind of rehydrates you a little bit and uh, gets you back going with low ABV that you can, again, crush all day long. Uh, no, absolutely, and I, you know I think it's it's really fun to build that into a piece of a, of a of a larger concept for a beer, but without the idea that this is about sourness, this is about the complexity of how we're developing acid character. This is about a one-dimensional acid character and what that lends to these other dimensions of this kind of wheat body and this dry hop character and these other things we're trying to do to create a complex beer in a very different way. Right, and that's there's I love a kettle soured beer. Me too. You know, I yeah. love a tart beer. But if someone says a sour beer, you know, there's a complexity that I'm looking for generally. Absolutely. Now, absolutely. You know, I know the styles. I know a Berliner or a Goza is typically going to give me kind of that, uh, maybe not necessarily one-dimensional, but, you know, a lot less depth than, uh, than like a, a goose, goose or yeah. a lambic or something like that. So. Yeah, that's not at all. We're not even trying to represent ourselves that way. We right. do have some experimentation projects that fall very short of those kind of Appalachian-based Belgian type yeah. styles, uh, but we we want to be really clear about what we're trying to accomplish when we set out to do a project yeah, like this. Because, like you said, there is a lot of uh, debate on the semantics. With there is, oh yeah. Out there. Uh-huh. So, and that's I've found that a lot of the uh, in Georgia, they're making some great beers here. The south, I'd say the south in general, a lot of the ones are calling north I, northeast IPA to me are more hybrid. You know, the mm-hmm. the northeast IPAs should have low bitterness, high juiciness, some haziness, a little more mouthfeel to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're getting those that maybe, you know, the, there's not much mouthfeel. They're a little thin. And the bitterness is the biggest thing that I've Kind of West Coast. A lot yeah. of them still have that West Coast bitter backbone there. So. Well, yeah, you know, and I think I think part of that, too, is that um, a lot of those beers, they're, they're actually very difficult to execute well. Um, mm-hmm. And and I you know for for better or worse I think a lot of people are seeing how popular that is and they want to use those words hazy and juicy are words that sell beer right they now do. and that's Absolutely. you know more power to them um, but from our perspective we we really really want to lead with our beer quality and we are very conscious of not letting our verbiage or our sales tactics get out in front of the quality of our product. 
Okay. Yeah. So and, and and again, it's 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 something that you that you kind of uh, really kind of strive for and and have kind of worked that uh, that recipes and worked some of the things that you've had prior to this. Uh, the one thing I really noticed uh, with you is when I first met you, uh, the Hot Atlanta or the um, the uh, your Hot Atlanta IPA. Mm-hmm. Um, Changed a little bit when you came in and kind of just smoothed out that mouthfeel a little bit, made it a little bit less bitter. And so, just are subtle changes like that something uh, that's important to sometimes uh, your core brands? I think for me, uh, the way that I think about beer and the way that Garrett and I talk about beer a lot, it, we, we really want to approach our beers as drinkability being a key factor. We want beers that leave you wanting another sip. We're not necessarily trying to challenge people with seeing what the most bitter mm-hmm. thing or the most sour thing or the most hoppy thing that they can drink is. We want we want people to have a beverage that they want to finish a can and they want to grab another one out of the fridge if that's their inclination. And and that's a lifetime of work trying to get to that point for sure. Absolutely. We're going to talk more to Red Brick in just a moment. We need to take a quick break. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll be back right after this. Our Reformation Brewery, celebrating the Reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowa watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com. We are reminiscing about our Myrtle Beach days uh, back when we were young and crazy. Back in the day. Back in the day, exactly. But uh, no, we're talking Red Brick uh, here live at Red Brick Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. It's Atlanta's oldest currently operating craft brewery indeed that, it is yes i had to get those caveats in there but uh yeah garrett lockhart president brewmaster and gavin mckenna director of brewing operations joins us on the show this week sipping on their brand new release uh, airbus straight daydream the uh, myrtle beach ipa we've talked extensively about that but uh want to talk some, a little bit more about some of your other beers including the, the one that you've got with there with no label i'm very curious about that one we have back some, there we have some naked cans here some naked tall boys can we say that on the radio you can say naked tall okay, boys okay we just did okay, okay. Yeah. okay. that's a uh, very that sensual. should be the name of your next beer, and release them just like this. <laughs> naked Tall Boy, what is it? I think, we don't I think, know. That, I think the Naked Tall Boy deserves a graphic, honestly. Uh, open it and find know. out. Yes. <laughs> that's that's just well, my preference. Can you put that graphic on the can, though? There you go. That's can a, that graphic the How do you do it tastefully? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're, we're Gavin, shall we open one of these and check yeah, them out? Yeah, please. Want me to crack it open? All right, so let's see. So. Well, you said you're not even quite sure what we have here, right? Do we have? Oh, to I know call what it? we have here. I okay. just don't know what to call it yet. No um, names. Okay. Oh, that's no very. It's beer. very. Uh, yeah. It's very right. So good. we're getting something that uh, a new beer for you, and I mm-hmm. see some uh, some nice uh, raspberryish coloration here. Yeah, it's Reddish this is actually uh, blue blueberry and cherry. Okay. Blueberry blueberry cherry. Fruit in this okay. beer, and it's it's done with coffee. This is a. A barrel aged kettle sour with lactose. Interesting. Okay. So okay. it's aged in a second use bourbon barrel. And we, when we decided to bring this beer to the Bright Tank, we wanted to do a little bit of refermentation on cherries and blueberries, and then also incorporate cinnamon and vanilla and coffee to try to create some edges to it that might play well with the fruit. And, um, you know, we, we wanted to do a couple cobbler beers and small releases this summer, kind of stuff that was built around cinnamon and vanilla. We walked it back a little on this one to showcase the barrel character. And we're, we're not sure what to call it yet, but we're really proud of the result. This is something we no, put into cans No, you get a little today. bit of that fruitiness yeah. to it, but you're also tasting a little bit of that, which said cinnamon and vanilla. It's not overpowering. It's it's actually a very a very easy drinker on this one. Um but you do get some of those barrel characteristics too. This is this is delicious. This is great. I don't think those are flavors I ever would have thought of putting mm-hmm. together. Cherry, blueberry, no. coffee, and cinnamon in that. But uh, they work extremely well together. You Very know, nice. Gavin's doing crazy stuff right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think How about that's part it? of my job is to bring 10 ideas to Garrett's office, and okay. seven of them he thinks that could be cool, and three of them he throws something at me. Throws, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of those three, two of them I think are actually pretty cool, and I just do them. That, that's when you brew them off them. hours when he's not here, right? When he's no, I mean, kids, I, you so. know, I, I try to be fairly transparent. <laughs> I, I got you. I think I want to do it. And he says, oh, Gavin, come on. Man. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Break him down little by little, right? 
So it's yeah. incremental. It always has to. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's good at breaking me down. Um, His, yeah, that's every good. day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, you know, I think sometimes he throws crazy stuff at me, like just off the wall, never even possible stuff, so that I will say yes to stuff like this, where I'm just like, okay. That's a good, oh, that's actually that's a good, a good idea. Good approach yeah. There, yeah. yeah. What's the craziest thing you've ever taken to him that he's just said, absolutely no way? That's maybe a better question for Garrett. I feel like there's been a couple where he's just been that's outlandish. Can you think of one uh, that was just gosh. way out there? I'd like to do a kimchi and oyster sour. I was going to say, has <laughs> a, a seafood goza. Has that been? We, we did a, uh, last week we did a sea salt, grapefruit, and um, cacao nib saison that I think upset him a little bit okay. all the way through. Okay. Right. It, didn't, it didn't upset me. <laughs> it didn't upset me. I was, I was confused at what was, what was the uh, right. final product, but I tasted it and I was like, whoa. Whoa, um, I wasn't expecting those flavors okay. to come through, and it was pleasantly surprising, actually. Uh, but here's the thing: I mean, it makes it so interesting. And of course, you know, we, we we just mentioned it before about the beer laws, where we can actually sell beer that directly from the brewery to the consumer. Right. This gives you the opportunity to kind of do that kind of stuff. So if it's not necessarily a home run, if it's a solid single, that's okay, you know. But you can experiment at your tap room and see what's working and what's not. Well, I think I think all joking aside, I think you know I, I view my role in this company. That's a lot of what I was tasked with mm-hmm. was coming in with ideas that maybe weren't things that we were already accomplishing and, and trying to see if we could create a laboratory out of the tap room that would draw people's interest by by respecting people's dollars but also by taking risks that we thought would be rewarded. So yeah, that's something uh, Garrett, we, t- we brushed on this real briefly uh, in the first part of the interview but uh, there is a, a solid effort to kind of renew Red Brick. Right, I mean, this isn't by accident. It's just like let's do a few new beers and that. We received some uh, uh, press release information not too long ago that said, "Come meet the new Red Brick." So, sure. yeah. uh, this is an effort that you're putting out to kind of re- rebrand, relaunch yourselves. Correct? Yeah, I, th- I think there's no question about that. I mean, you know, as, as the oldest craft brewery in Georgia, um, there's a lot of challenges I think that come with that. Right? Um, you've been around for coming up on 25 years Mm -hmm. and there's a new brewery opening it seems like every other week around here and um what are we gonna do to stand out from the crowd right and um you know being able to do new exciting cool things you know we being 25 years old it it allows us to uh have a lot of experience sure and institutional knowledge of of 25 years of brewing history, right? Yeah. So um, being able to do new and exciting beers, I think, is what is what Atlanta's looking for. Mm-hmm. And so our tap room now has the ability to show off all of the cool things that we can do, and it's it's a great spot to be, right? Because, yeah. and, and we talk about, we focus a lot on the Nor- new Georgia laws right. on here, and we don't mean to harp on that, but it's it's a big deal for us. It know, is. Here. It, it changed the game for it, Georgia right. brewers. So, I mean, these... Multiple hype well variants that we're going to talk about in a little bit. These multiple variants that you're doing, they're, it would have been a waste of your – seriously, and you don't want to think all about money, but it would have been a waste of, of money and time to do that under the old laws, correct? Yeah, I think so because, you know, you're talking about those old laws and it was like a flat fee plus a glass and 36 ounces of beer. You're really limited on what you can do and what you can show off um, and still, you know, operating mm-hmm. a business, right? So, right, um, sure. Now with uh, the September first law change, um, it allows us to do all these different things, and you know, uh, bring Gavin in to kind of lead the direction of, of kind of the new Red Brick has been has been awesome. It's been fun to kind of wa- sit back and watch what he's doing. You know, he comes into my office every day with these crazy ideas, and I go, "Whoa, yeah, I never even thought of it, but but they're great, mm-hmm. great, great things." And you taste the beers, it's it's a whole new red brick. You know, and it's funny because uh, Brian and I were talking. We were here uh, a couple weeks ago for one of the launches as well. And, and, and I would urge anyone who has not given red brick a try in a while to come back and do it. because Absolutely. Because cause really, I mean, I've been here in the more in the past month and a half than I have been in the past four years. You know, I got, really I got to just, say, that's my favorite compliment. It really is. You know, I love I mean, it when people say that, it, that they it, haven't been in three or four years and they have a care every week. That makes me feel really good about what we're accomplishing. Yeah, I mean, just, just I look forward to everything you guys are doing and it's like, okay, this is cool and I know that it's going to be a solid beer and, and, and really you've, you've, you've upped your game and just, again, it's become a destination here on the west side, I think, and it's been great. Absolutely. And yeah. one of the things, guys, that you did that or that you've done recently that really got people talking. And we talked a little bit about the online forums and discussion in, in that. 
And uh, th- those folks can be influencers in the industry. You know, you have large groups of beer geeks talking about what they like and don't like. And uh, you did your Hypewell, your bourbon barrel aged stout recently. And then after the initial release of that beer, there were several variants. I believe 210, is that right, variants of the Hypewell? <laughs> 340, yeah. maybe 300. So, somewhere in there. Maybe, so, I don't know. And give but or take you, a thousand. Yeah. Right, close there. <laughs> but you did uh, bottle releases on a pretty regular basis for a while, rolling out these new ones. And people were hyped. People were excited for those. Yeah. People were coming up. So yeah, I, th- I think it's the most interest we've seen at the tap room um, from those variants to date. I haven't seen uh, a crowd of 30, 40 people line up in front of the brewery prior to a release uh, ever in the company history. So um, to see that is just awesome it makes makes you feel uh proud makes you excited about what we're doing in the direction of the company and to speak to that there were some releases you've done in the past that I, i've been excited about personally you know mm-hmm. that some of your anniversary beers and different things yeah. and when i was coming down i'm like man i need to get there early to beat the lines mm-hmm. and i wish there would have been lines mm-hmm. but there was times when i came in there just there wasn't sure. you know so it's uh you know talking about seeing those lines out and that there is a change here mm-hmm. you know you, well you could just skip the line so. you don't have to you don't have to wait in the oh line. get well that's <laughs> it man i'll come whenever now so this there you go good. that must All only right. apply to yes. tim because aaron and i stood in line exactly, exactly. Just, no. i just i just man. think it's don't don't question <laughs> don't an, question the man he knows what he's talking about so. <laughs> <laughs> hey we're gonna take a quick break right now coming back with the crew from red brick brewing on the beer guys radio show beerguysradio.com find us on facebook twitter and the instagrams we'll be back right after this Time for the hot list. The beer guys have the scoop on what you need to know for next week. That's hot. And there's all kinds of amazing stuff going on around Georgia this week. So much. Every week it just keeps growing Always. and growing and growing. So on Sunday we have two events at Monday Night's Garage with their Mischief Managed Bottle Release. And from the orchard to the barrel, the Science of Sour Beers, where they're going to talk about the design of their urban orchard and its role in their future beers. On Monday, we have Beer and Comedy Night at Sweetwater Brewing, and we have Trivia at Truck and Tap up in Woodstock. On Tuesday, check out Cheeses and Brews at Jekyll Brewing, then going into Wednesday for your hump day fun, Bison and Brew with Reformation Brewery at Ted's Montana Grill in Alpharetta. And we have Eventide hosting their Curiosity Club, Mm -hmm. and the theme is Local Potions with Cherokee Moon Mixology. On Thursday, the Living Street is in concert at Burnt Hickory Brewery. And if you missed the Alpharetta Bison and Brew with Reformation, check it out in Decatur at Ted's Montana Grill. And in Savannah, we have Geeks Who Drink Trivia at Southbound Brewing. On Friday, we have the Cosmic Debris release at Creature Comforts oh, Brewing. Yeah. That's one that people always look forward to. We have some live music up at Etowa Meadery. Orvius Brewing hosts the first in a series of beer dinners dubbed the Hexameter or Hexameter beer dinner series that's at the brewery in atlanta on saturday urban tree and left up brewing celebrate their second anniversaries in savannah river watch brewery showcases belgian beer styles festival season gets festival season there you go I'm easy for you saturday to say again okay on Saturday, Urban Tree and Left Nut Brewing celebrate their second anniversaries over in Savannah. River Watch Brewery showcases Belgian beer styles. Festival season rolls on with Tiny Palooza at Lincoln Fill Station and the Roswell Beer Fest. And Aaron, Beer Guys Radio will be on hand at both of those, both of those festivals. We're splitting it up. It's We're crazy. We're split it up, man. Yeah. So we'll be out there at both of those events. Come say hi to us. And also, Monday Night Garage releases the very popular Tears of My Enemies Barrel Age Stouts. For a full list of events, because we cannot cover them all no. on the show, check out our calendar of events at BeerGuysRadio.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Oh, God, here we go again. Dork alert. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Visit us on the socials, Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Red Brick Brewing Company in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia's oldest operating craft brewery. We're sipping everything, right? A little bit of everything here. So we've currently been in your Mayan version of a Hypewell Variance, and that's Variance with a Z. It is. It's (laughs) very important that everybody understands that. Absolutely. Very cool, uh, very cool pixel art. 
labels here. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, so we're just enjoying this. And this is a bourbon barrel-aged hype well, which is your imperial stout, barrel-aged yep. stout, with uh, cacao, vanilla, cinnamon, pasilla, and japones, peppers, right? Yes. Okay. This is good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if you haven't heard that, if no one's told you that yet, this is good. Well, you never want to take that for granted. It's, Absolutely. Every time right, someone man. drinks it and they like it, that's that's a win. We're and, enjoying you know, you it. That's gotta, good stuff. Yeah, you know, I think we're in an industry where you're as good as your latest beverage. So, right. yeah. And that's the truth, man. Yep. That's You You slide on one of those hype whales. You, no, the people will people notice and they'll let you know. They will. Yes. It's true. Yeah, that's absolutely. True. Well, yeah. guys, I, you know what? I think, Brian, we were talking kind of off air a little bit about uh, a beer we just drank. You had some questions there, correct? Yeah, it was really intriguing. So a beer I'm calling the Naked Tall Boy that we, we cracked earlier on had a lot of interesting notes. Naked and I was wondering, boy. where on earth did you come up with that idea for that beer again? Sure. So um, first of all, Naked Tall Boy is a working name because we're serving it in a bright-sided 16-ounce can because uh, we don't know what to call it yet. It's glorious. Yes. Naked Tall Boy could stick. Um, <laughs> this is a beer that was a second-use bourbon barrel uh, aging on a kettle sour with lactose. And so we aged the space beer with the idea that it would be really fun to do something along the lines of, say, a cobbler beer, add some cinnamon and mm-hmm. some vanilla to it and see how that played. And locally, we've, we've noticed that some other people are doing beers like that. And, you know, originally I'd thought, oh, well, let's just do a cherry cobbler with it. That would be really fun. It would be great. And, you know, some of, some of my good friends have launched similar beers, and I really never would want to feel like I was infringing on what they're already doing or, you know, and maybe try to do something that's very original, right, or at least uh, more innovative in terms of trying to be distinct and unique in what we're trying to do. And so I was thinking about the idea of cherries and... You know, the idea of coffee and the coffee cherry and how how some of those natural process and lighter roast coffees can lend some really cool tropical and, and bright cherry fruit mm-hmm. to a cup of coffee. And then thinking about some of the ways where we've recently been playing around with blueberries with coffee and how that how those tend to lend complementary flavors. Mm-hmm. And so we finally settled on a beer that that kind of encapsulates all of that. Uh, so we, we took an Ethiopian and a Colombian light roast coffee. And we aged our kettle sour base on that and then added to a refermentation with blueberries and tart cherries. Okay. Uh, from there, you know, we, we dosed with, uh, with cinnamon and with vanilla beans. And the idea would be that you'd have this top note of acidity from the blueberries and the cherries and this light fruitiness. Mm-hmm. And then you'd have this bottom note of barrel character, cinnamon and vanilla, all these kind of dessert, more dessert kind of flavors with the yeah. oak as well. And then the coffee would be kind of this pinpoint in the middle that would bring all those flavors together interesting uh which is something that i think we're we're very proud of i think it's come out well and i think at the very least it'll be something that's distinct in the market when we launch it yeah and i think it's interesting that uh, you know you're you're getting a lot of uh different uh bang for your buck for lack of a better term for different time of your base beers uh sure. you know we talked about the whales the hype whale that you've got as well we're drinking on the mayan a uh, variant but you've got it like i said about six thousand different uh, variants of that as well mm-hmm. but you're able to kind of make those adjuncts and make those flavors play with each other with your base beer and just kind of again um kind of have fun with the with some different flavors of that too right well i think you know this is uh not very original but um innovation is a function of necessity right <laughs> so sure. we're a 50 barrel brewery you know we're designed to be able to reach a lot of people with our beers mm-hmm. and that's an awesome challenge you know to be able to kind of come up with these these base fermentation profiles that are really going to speak to a wide variety of people and speak in a wide variety of markets whether that's a supermarket retail or a craft specialty store or an on-premise location where you're at a local beer bar or at your favorite pub or restaurant and um the, the question from there becomes, how do you take those base fermentations and, and try to innovate in what you can offer in the tap room and create a handful of different profiles that will keep people interested, not just in the beer that you made that they can buy at the grocery store, but to develop another level of trust with them for how they might be able to interact with your tap room and find some stuff that, that is a level uh, beyond what they're looking for in the supermarket. Now, it's interesting. Again, you talk about uh, kind of balancing that tap room with the, the retail sales. One of the things that you've done recently is partnered with the Georgia Aquarium. And uh, talk to us a little bit about that, how that happened, and, and how you guys are going about that one. The Georgia Aquarium partnership has been awesome. Um, mm-hmm. They actually reached out to us, and um, it came from an article that they saw about us going to cans and like the uh, sustainability aspect of cans. And so um, we started a conversation, and we they they said, "Hey, you know, um, 
this is a, a new market kind of opening up a, a different segment of an audience for us at the aquarium. And um, they asked if we were interested, and we said, absolutely, we are. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're on our, gosh, fourth? third. I was going to say your fourth, fourth, right? Yeah, I think yeah. this is fourth. the fourth because we're coming back around to the, to the yeah. Because you've had the whale shark seasonal. weed, you've had the, the penguin pale penguin ale, pale and the, uh, the sea otter. otter sea otter stout. Yes. Sea otter and stout. I think I saw, so next one coming up is... Uh, yeah, so we're ready to announce it now. We're going to be doing a, a sea dragon, sea dragon, basil blondale. Nice, basil so blonde. it's a honey oh, and basil right. blondale. All right. And part of that is just about you know how we reach. You know, we want this beer to be available widely. We want it to be in supermarkets. We want it to be something that really supports conservation in the Georgia Aquarium, and balancing the idea of innovation and creative craft beer with accessibility and with the idea that we're going to be selling a volume of it that we really want to be able to contribute to the aquarium's uh, you know, aquatic and marine life conservation mission as well. Yeah, well Gavin, you said balance. I'm sorry. Go ahead, no, Gary. I was, sorry. I was just going to say that the aquarium partnership has been amazing because it allows us to kind of give back to a cause and really um, it, mm-hmm. it's conservation efforts across the world. Um, Oh, right. Yeah. With the aquarium? Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, so a portion yeah. of every six-pack sold in you know the southeast goes back to those efforts. So it's been, it's been an exciting, awesome opportunity for us to kind of give back to a local partner. And there's beer involved. There's there so beer involved. that. So. Exactly right. Now, Gavin, you mentioned about balancing innovation you mm-hmm. know, and creativity there. And, and we talked a little bit more about balancing the flavors. And one of my favorite variants of the Hypewell was the Neapolitan. Sure. And uh, a lot of great variants. But I really like the Neapolitan because when you first take the taste of it, all the flavors are kind of there together. But then you kind of go through a wave. I said kind of Willy Wonka. <laughs> you taste the strawberry. You taste the vanilla. You taste the chocolate separately. Uh-huh. But everything is very, very, very much in balance. Right. And, you know, and today extreme is popular. You know, we use we use 4,000 pounds per barrel of hops in this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Beer, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, you guys don't really go that route, though, right? I mean, uh, you, you are looking for more balance in things. Yeah, there's, there's no question. You know, I think that I think that I've learned some lessons as far as meeting people in the middle. Um, I used to be a little bit more stubborn in my past life about saying, well, this is enough cacao nibs this is enough coconut for you in this whether it's a six still or a half barrel or a seven barrel batch or a 15 barrel batch but i think i've realized that i've needed to come up a little bit and kind of make those flavors a little bit more apparent um in terms of just allowing people to not fish for them making them clear you know allowing people to kind of take a sip and immediately appreciate what the flavor is that I'm trying to convey. And, right. and, that, um, and that's one of the things that's kind of fr- frustrating to me as a beer drinker sometimes that some people will say it's like, oh, it's got X, Y, and Z in there. But I'm like, okay, I can't taste any of that. I'm like, well, that's, yeah. You know, so that's one that's, of those ones where, like, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a bunch of our, like, I laugh about this all the time. We've talked to Garrett about it. But, you know, this beer is, for example, sea salt. You know, like, yeah. sodium chloride is an important brewing salt. If you can't taste it, I'm not going to talk about it. Right. But on yeah, the other hand, you know, so that's one that I think is kind of funny when it gets mentioned. But um, but on the other hand, like, I think we also have to be really conscious of the fact that people are still looking for a beer. They're not looking mm-hmm. for a candy bar. They're not looking for a warhead. That's true. You yeah. know, they're not looking for anything that you can buy in the, in the Kroger candy aisle. You have to be really respectful of the fact that people appreciate nuance and they appreciate balance of flavors. And that's what makes fine cuisine. And I believe that. As the craft beer movement continues to intersect with the uh, local and and culinary food movement, I think that we're going to see more of that coming back to the balance. Of Let's flavors. just Randall like Sour Patch Kids and, and well, Warheads. You know, sometimes, be, <laughs> as a home brewer, before you go pro, you can sure. be kind of pushed to go a little more extreme on certain things. Like if you enter, and you probably know where I'm headed with this, Brian. We did a peach saison and uh, entered it into a competition. And I, I got really, really good marks on it. One, we won a r- ribbon, I believe, second. Congratulations! Uh, so Thank you. But all the notes on the on the all the notes on the score sheet said needs more peach, needs more peach. It was a peach saison. To me, it did not need it. It was the saison was still there. It tasted like biting into a fresh peach. It didn't need to be any more extreme. So I'm like. These judges don't know what they're talking about. This is crazy in that. So I look at the judges. One of them was Phil Farrell. you got to so, listen to Phil. Yeah. Oh, that, and that, that guy kind of knows what he's talking about. And yeah. for those who aren't homebrewers of that, Phil was uh, vice president of the region for the BJCP beer judging panel. And he is a grand master. I believe he has a beer like judge. a qualification as a BJCP beer judge that only two or three people right, have. Right, exactly. Yeah. So i got to take Phil's word as gospel there for sure. Yeah. 
Definitely. Well, cool. Guys, I mean, we could talk about this for another hour and a half. This has been a great conversation. Thank you so much, Garrett Gavin, for uh, opening up uh, your brewery to us. And, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a blast. It means the world that you guys want to come talk to us. Thank you so much Thank for taking you. the time. Red so, guys, brewing. if folks want yeah. to keep up with what in the world is going on here and find out about all those new releases, what is the best way for them to do that? Redbrickbrewing.com. There you go. Awesome. Facebook, you guys do the socials. We do, and all we that, do the right? socials, Facebook, yeah. If you want to check us out on Instagram, if you want to check us out on, uh, on you know, I don't know, anything. I guess Vine's dead now, so we don't do Vines. that. But you on MySpace? Uh, <laughs> Alta Vista? We should sign up. Okay. Yeah. Now that you mention it, well, maybe we should do a collaborative uh, MySpace okay. page. Together. I That'd believe be they'd be cool. a good place for some airbrush day drink. We'll get Cameron on that. So get we'll the glitter sure. involved. There you go. Yes, there you go. Absolutely. No, cool. Guys, no thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for having us. Excellent. Giveaway to giveaway. What do we got? Our winner this week, Aaron Williams, is... It's not Aaron Williams. No, I hope not. It's I'm not, not eligible. Our winner is William Dudziak. Sure. So I hope I got the name right, or at least close enough where William knows who I'm talking about. So William, drop us an email to beerguys at beerguysradio.com, and we will send you an extremely awesome beer swag pack. And we just got some Beer Guys Radio magnets in today. They're pretty awesome. We don't know how they work. Yeah, how do they work? But they're cool, and we'll throw one in the pack there for you. So there you go. Now, Aaron, if others want to join in the fun and be entered to win cool prizes, how would they do that? Just head to beerguysradio.com. Sign up for This Week in Georgia Beer. You'll get a weekly newsletter with all the happenings in Georgia Beer. You'll also be entered to win that awesome weekly swag pack. Coming up next week, we have got Bee Craft Meadery. So we're talking mead next week. Pretty excited about that. Check us out in the meantime at beerguysradio.com and on the socials. And don't forget to drink local. We'll talk to you next week.